Hey guys, my name is Joe and welcome to Potato Recap. In today's video, we will be checking out the romantic thriller film Tall Tales. But before we get started, please like, share, and subscribe. Many people left their homes after the Second World War. Some had not been heard from for years. Hanko, a con man, Tama Sabo Kimmel, responds to the newspaper classified ads. Pretending to be the sought-after individual's comrade and portraying the individual as a hero. To craft a heartwarming tale in exchange for lodging, food, clothing, or even cash. The movie starts as he is in his latest scam. He rings a door, and a woman answers. They sit down for a cup of tea as Hanko explains to the woman he used to serve in the military with her son. He tells her how her son saved his life when they were caught in a blizzard. He says the son carried him through the cold until they found shelter. On arriving at the house, they found the owner, a woman, dead lying on the floor. He says that they also found a baby in the house and that the woman's son was a hero because he decided to take the baby and face the blizzard until he found a hospital. He adds that that was when he parted ways with her son, never meeting each other again. The woman was thankful for the closure he had offered. She offers him a place to stay for the night, a feast when he wakes, and some money. That morning, he enjoys his breakfast and looks at the paper for his next victim. Hanko then heads out to a tailor shop. After fitting and trying out the suit, he pays the tailor. However, the tailor claims that the suit's price has increased and that he should add some money. Hanko and the tailor get into an argument about the price. Hanko waits until the tailor gets distracted and uses that opportunity to run off with the suit. Hanko then meets up with his next target. When he enters his car, he notices a detective badge. However, this does not deter him. As usual, he gives the hero in the winter tale and how they serve together in the army. The detective initially acts suspicious about Hanko and claims that there are a lot of summers nowadays. But through good old-fashioned body language and intuition, Hanko convinces the detective that he knew his brother and that he last saw him when he was saving a baby in the winter. To thank Hanko for the closure, he offered the detective to treat him to lunch and surprise him. Once they get to the restaurant, Hanko meets a table full of men. The detective introduces the men as soldiers who served with his lost brother and then asks Hanko to say hi to his old war buddies. Since Hanko was lying about everything, they quickly denied that they didn't know Hanko. Things go down south pretty fast. They take him out to the alley and gang up on him. The men beat him ruthlessly, but luckily a waitress appears and scares them that the police are on their way. Once they are distracted, this gives Hanko a chance to run away. He escapes by train after falling into a detective's trap. Once on the train, an old man warns him that if he doesn't have papers showing his identity, then the police inspecting the train will catch him. Since he lacks the necessary paperwork, he jumps to the train cart and jumps out. The police shoot at him, but he luckily escapes into the forest to avoid being inspected. Here, he meets Judith Vika Verekis and her son Virgil who live in a tidy house in the woods and who at first comes off as quite hostile. Judith's husband, the hunter, didn't return from the war, allowing Hanko to retell his favorite tale. That night, Judith offers Hanko to shed to Hanko so he can sleep there and continue his journey the following day. However, she tells him that he is a good storyteller, hinting that she already knew he was lying. Since Hanko wants to stay the following morning, he suggests they allow him to accompany them in their hunting. He is given the task of blowing a horn that creates a sound that attracts deer. After a while, they spot one, and Virgil makes his first kill. That night, they eat meat stew and dance to music. After Virgil goes to bed, Hanko and Judith continue dancing until they almost kiss. However, Hanko steps back and leaves towards the shed. Judith follows him and that night desire takes the place of mistrust and suspicion as Hanko and Judith become intertwined. In addition, the boy will find a new father because a strong hand is always helpful at home. 
Hanko stays with Judith and the boy helping out in the household and acting like the man of the house. After a couple of weeks, they embark on the town to sell the meat they have hunted. While there, they witness a public execution of a man who was an alleged traitor. They then head to the butchery. As Judith and Virgil sell the meat, Hanko decides to sit on the side of the road and continue his old habit of checking out the classified ads in the paper. Even before he can flip another page, a policeman shows up and asks for his identification papers. He responds by saying that they got lost. They carry him onto the truck and take him to the station. Here, he is told that he will be recruited into forced labor if he doesn't have papers. In his defense, he says he left the front lines a few months ago and lost his papers. However, they don't want to hear his excuses, and it looks like he will receive hard labor. Luckily, Judith storms in and claims that she knows him and that they served together with her husband, and that Hanko only came to this side of the country to tell her about her husband. The commander then asks Judith to provide three extra deer meat for Hanko to be set free. She agrees, and they assign a temporary ID. The afternoon they spend their time by a river. Judith shows Hanko the scar she received from her abusive husband. While Hanko and Virgil are out hunting, they come across a trap that has been triggered, and blood stains everywhere. However, the animal was nowhere to be seen. Hanko then suspects that someone is roaming the woods. That night, Hanko and the family enjoy their meal, and Judith invites him to sleep in her bed instead of the shed. Meanwhile, Virgil had been noticing something going on between his mom and Hanko. The following morning, Hanko wakes up only to notice that Virgil's room is wide open and no one is inside. They head out with Judith to search for him in the woods. The trails they find lead them back to the house, and what they find shocks them. The hunter Bersays, Levant Molnar, and husband to Judith, father to Virgil, is seated at the dining table discussing with Virgil. Based on Virgil's information, he continues with Hanko's lie about how he saved a little baby in the blizzard. Hanko at first is confused by Bursay's actions. That night they have supper and Bursay's goes into his son's room. Judith goes out to talk with Hanko. She tells him that she hates her husband and that if he touches her, she will kill him. They kiss each other goodnight and part for the night. Judith is shaving her husband's beard the following day. Virgil is cutting wood and Hanko is smoking. Bursay's casually grabs Judith which infuriates Hanko, and he decides to go to the forest to search for more wood. Judith joins him later and requests that Hanko kills her husband. She tells him that he and her husband should go to the forest to hunt, but only Hanko should return, and they can tell Virgil that an accident happened. As planned, Hanko and Bursas head out to hunt in the woods the next day. Here, Hanko asks why Bursas collaborated with his lie, yet they have never met. Bersays opens up and says he was a bad person in the army and did terrible things. But through Hanko's story, he appeared as a hero to his family and he wished it to stay that way. Bersays then thanked Hanko for caring for his family while he was gone. A few moments later, he hands Hanko his gun as he goes to gather some mushrooms. Hanko remembers the deal he had made with Judith to kill Bersays. He points the rifle at the unsuspecting Bursays, but at the final moment, he chickens out and doesn't kill him. They return home and have dinner, and Bursays allows Hanko to dance with his wife. They get carried away a little bit, and you can see the jealousy in Bursays' eyes. The following day, Bursays heads out of town, accompanied by Virgil. It allows Judith and Hanko to talk. Judith explains how disappointed she is and calls Hanko a coward. Hanko then leaves and heads out to town, wanting to board the train and leave for good. As he is in town reading a newspaper as usual, he can't seem to get Judith off his mind. Then suddenly Virgil comes out of nowhere, telling him that Bursays has been arrested and that they need him. He follows Virgil to the station. Here, a man accuses Bursays of war crimes, including killing his son in front of him just because he could no longer match. The man claimed that Bursays committed heinous acts while on duty and demanded retribution. However, since Hanko had been called an eyewitness, he denies all the man's claims and says that he had served with Bursays and never committed war crimes. 
Without any substantial evidence against Bursays, he is set free to go but must bring 50 kilos of meat in 50 weeks as they head out of the station. Bursays warns Hanko not to go near him and his family since he knows he slept with his wife. Back at the house in the woods, Virgil is happy to have his father set free. Judith is washing the dishes and he creeps behind her. He tells her that she was the reason he survived the war and that her memory kept him going. She responds by saying that that is unfortunate, hinting that she would have preferred him dead. He gets angry and slaps her. Then he starts to apologize, saying he will never harm her again. Judith then spits on his face. Berse slaps her again and this time pulls his belt ready to whip her. Virgil comes down the stairs after hearing the commission. Judith pleads with Virgil to return to his room but Bursays commands him to stay there and watch his mother get beaten. Overcome with rage, Virgil grabs a rifle and points at Bursays. Virgil tells his father to stop hurting his mother. Now focused on Virgil's situation, he steadily moves towards him. This allows Judith to grab a knife from the kitchen. Bursays is able to get the gun off of Virgil. But before he can do anything, Judith holds a knife by his throat. She then tells Virgil to run. However, Judith is overpowered by Bursays, and the knife is taken away from her. In that split moment, she dashes out of the house with Virgil. Bursays takes the rifle and starts to hunt them as Judith and her son run. Judith gets caught in one of the animal traps, gnawing her foot. Injured, Virgil tries to help her out, and they continue fleeing. In the meantime, Bursays is shooting in a certain direction. One of the bullets manages to hit Virgil, and he passes out instantly. Judith drags Virgil's body without any other option, and they hide behind an abandoned boat near the river. While this is going on, Hanko randomly runs into Bursays in his hunt. He becomes Bursays hostage and is told to head towards the river. Bursays tells him to go towards the abandoned boat and check what's inside. On arriving at the boat, Hanko sees the man who accused Bursays for killing his son. The man lay there dead, but he also notices Judith and Virgil hiding behind the boat through the crack of the boat. Bursays instruct Hanko to carry the man's body and toss it to the river. He is then told to enter the river. Just before Hanko gets shot, he dives in, dodging the bullet. Luckily, it starts to rain and it becomes difficult to see the ripples made by Hanko. He then emerges out of the water grabbing Bursays by the foot, disarming him and they begin to fight. However, Bursays pulls out a knife, but Hanko knocks it off. However, Bursays seems stronger, overwhelming Hanko and drowning him in the river. While they were fighting, Judith came out of hiding to try and help Hanko, but she could barely move due to her injured leg. Now that Bursays presumed Hanko dead, he goes off to kill Judith. But before he can harm her, Hanko appears and stabs in the gut. Hanko quickly takes Virgil, who was by now comatose, and vows to send help to get Judith. He heads out to the train tracks and stops a train. We are taken a few weeks later, where the three are now a happy family about to travel. Well, that is it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. We appreciate your support.